Real life brain eaters can be found down on the farm. Luckily, they terrorize not humans, but ants. When winter comes and the temperature starts to fall, most ants move out of the grass and down into their nests underground. But some ants are different. They're like zombies. Their bodies are still alive, but they're under the control of an animal that's taken over their brain. The real brain eater is a parasite that's lodged in the ant's head. The ant is still breathing, but paralyzed. Somehow, the parasite can make the ant climb to the tip of a leaf and clamp its jaws onto the blade of grass. In cool temperatures, the paralyzed ant can remain hanging onto the grass stem for up to eight weeks. But this is just the beginning of one of the most complicated life cycles on the planet. Ants don't usually cling to the tips of grass because these are the bits that get eaten by mammals like rabbits. This is bad for the ant, but it's exactly what the parasite wants because when it gets eaten, it breaks out of the digestive system and into the liver. Here, it grows into its adult form, a parasitic flatworm called a liver fluke that feeds on blood. But now it has to get back to the ant. So the mature liver fluke produces thousands of eggs every day. Incredibly, these eggs only hatch if they're eaten by a snail. Phase two begins when the egg hatches and the parasite moves into the snail's breathing cavity. It's so irritating that the snail covers the parasite in slime. Eventually, there's so much mucus that the snail has to cough up the slime ball. And it just so happens that snail snot is one of the favorite foods of the ant. It's time for phase three, where the parasite changes again and moves into the head, where it takes control and turns the insect into bunny chow.